After dissecting every single bit of information about the new MacBook Pros on Apple's website, I think I have a rough idea on how well these machines will perform when it comes to 3D work. Let's dive in. This time, Apple provided us not only with a lot of charts, but also with the actual PCs used for all the speed test comparisons. You just have to dig into the small print to get all the information, but it's all there. In combination with the known performance of the previous generation MacBook Pros and M1 MacBooks, we can get a pretty good idea of what kind of performance to expect. Of course, we have to wait for the real benchmarks, but if my estimates are even remotely close to the real numbers, then these new MacBook Pros will be perfect for 3D work. They seem to pack some serious punch. Let's start with the CPU. Both the M1 Pro and the M1 Max have a 10-core CPU, 8 high-performance cores and 2 high-efficiency cores. It seems that on the CPU side there's no difference between the two. Only in GPU is where things differ. Here's what we know about the new MacBook CPU performance. As far as PC comparisons go, Apple compares the new MacBook Pros to MSI's GP66 Leopard, and more specifically the 11UG018 model. That machine has an 8-core i7 with a base clock speed of 2.4 GHz. According to Apple, the new MacBook Pro is 1.7 times faster than that machine. On the Mac side, Apple states that the new MacBook Pros are 2 to 3 times faster than the older generation i9 MacBook Pros. And when compared to the M1, the M1 Pro and M1 Max are 70% faster. So, in Cinebench terms, it looks like the new MacBook Pros will not only be faster than the previous gen, but also faster than desktop Macs, like my 10-core iMac Pro for example. Granted, the iMac Pro is a 4-year-old machine, but it's still quite impressive to see a laptop outperform a desktop CPU. It looks like the higher-end MacBook Pros will be around 35% faster than my 10-core iMac Pro. So, if my calculations are correct, the new MacBook Pros will score somewhere around 14,000 in Cinebench 23, which is incredibly impressive for a laptop. Even for a desktop, it's a really good number, but for a laptop, <laughs> it's awesome. Would you rely on just this one machine to CPU render? Probably not, but knowing how performance cinema is on my machine for pretty much every Cinema 4D task, I have no doubt I could use the higher-end MacBook Pro as my main computer. The leaked Geekbench numbers for the higher-end MacBook Pro seems to back up my estimates. The MacBook Pro in these tests is also around 35% faster than the 10-core iMac Pro. It scores an 11,542 on the multi-core CPU test, while my iMac Pro scores an 8,715. It also outperforms the 2020 10-core i9 iMac, which has a slightly higher score than my machine. What is interesting to note here is that the single-core performance for M1 Pro and M1 Max didn't change at all compared to the M1. It makes sense since they're probably running at the same speed, and they're also the same generation SoCs. Where things differ though is in the multi-core performance. There, the M1 Pro and M1 Max are 55% faster than the regular M1. So, just to summarize, on the CPU side, the new MacBook Pro will outperform every 8-core and 10-core Mac desktop, including the Mac Pro. That is really impressive. Of course, when we get to a higher spec, 12, 16, 24, or 28-core Mac Pros, of course the M1 Max won't be able to compete, but that would be insane to expect. The MacBook Pro essentially delivers desktop results on a much smaller portable package, and with the ability to spec it out to 64GB of memory, there won't be any limitations there as well. This amount of memory can fulfill pretty much every creative task. I have 64GB on my iMac Pro, and even though sometimes I can get close to the limits, I don't think I've exceeded that number. And the most impressive thing of all, the MacBook Pro delivers all this performance while consuming a heck of a lot less power than my iMac Pro or the 8-core Mac Pro. 
Now, on the GPU side, the numbers are equally impressive, especially if we take into account the fact that Apple compares the new MacBook Pros to the latest and greatest GPU. On the small print, they mentioned that the PC laptop they're using is MSI's GE76 Raider, which uses the NVIDIA 3080 mobile GPU. From the charts, we can see that the M1 Max doesn't reach the performance of the 3080, but it's very close. So it's super exciting to see NVIDIA type of performance on a Mac. But even more impressive is the fact that we can get this type of performance on a laptop that also consumes 100 watts less power than the PC laptop alternative. So what does that mean for GPU rendering on a Mac? Simple, extremely fast renders. Redshift or Octane on the MacBook Pro will be a dream to use. Just as a comparison, my iMac Pro uses the Vega 64 GPU and I'm very happy with the performance I get in Redshift. So getting rendering performance that is two times faster than that and on a laptop, that is wild. I've done multiple 4K animation renders on my iMac Pro, so the fact that I can get these renders two times faster is just awesome. Considering the fact that this uses three times less power than the PC laptop, the new MacBook Pro might be the ideal mobile rendering machine. It won't run as hot as the PC laptop, it will have a longer lasting battery, and most importantly, it will do all that while being less noisy. Of course, it remains to be seen how the fans on the new MacBook Pro sound, but I get the feeling it won't sound like a fighter jet about to take off. Personally, I'm fine with trading rendering performance for silent or almost silent operation, but that's just me. Your needs might differ. The other thing I really like with Apple's SoC is the unified memory architecture. Running out of GPU memory is not going to be a thing of the past. If your scene requires more than 16 gigabytes of GPU memory, the system will just allocate more. Simple as that. Currently, when I'm building a scene, I'm always careful not to go over the 16 gigabyte limit of my IMAX GPU, so this type of freedom will definitely change the way I work. In some cases, it might make for scenes that are not as optimized, since it encourages more sloppy work, but it's still good to have. Especially when you're on time crunch and you don't have the time to optimize every single thing in your scene. Will I buy the new MacBook Pro? <laughs> no, but it's not because I don't want to or because I don't think it's powerful enough. It's because I'm waiting for the new iMacs and iMac Pros. If I had to travel a lot, the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max would be an Insta buy for me. And I would even go further than that. The maxed out MacBook Pro is easily the best machine for most creative professionals. It can easily fulfill the needs of every designer, and with all the hardware accelerated video codecs, including ProRes RAW, it can easily meet the demands of any professional videographer and content creator. And as far as 3D goes, it can be the go-to machine for 3D generalists. And of course, the icing on the cake, you don't have to do all these tasks while sitting next to a power plug. The new MacBook Pro looks like it's going to be an incredible machine. I might be able to get my hands on one because I know quite a few people that plan to buy one. So stay tuned, I might be able to run some benchmarks and do some uh, 3D tests. But we'll see, I won't make any promises I can't keep. But I will let you know as soon as I know more. So what do you think? Are these new MacBook Pros everything you want out of a laptop? Are you going to buy one? And if yes, which one? Let me know in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.